Welcome to the uh, Board of Selectmen meeting for February 17, 2015. This is the snow version of the Board of Selectmen as we're Medfield is setting the record for the uh, most snow in the month of February. And we're only 17 days into it. Um, we start our meetings by reminding everybody that the meeting's being recorded and we're going to uh, take a moment uh, to appreciate our uh, servicemen and women that are serving around the world. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. And uh, if necessary, it says the uh, Medfield Board of Selectmen are going to meet in executive session at the close of the meeting to discuss the settlement agreement pertaining to the Redgate Farm property. So we'll, I think we're going to do that, aren't we, Mike? Uh, well, the town council will be here to... Uh, oh, to tell us whether we need to meet it in uh, any executive or public yeah, session? Yeah, it yeah. depends on how much detail I guess you want on okay. the okay. negotiations. So. Yeah. Um, so at uh, 7 o'clock, we're starting with the presentation of uh, Wastewater Treatment Plant Operation and Maintenance Award. Superintendent Feeney, Chief Operator Robert McDonald, and Wastewater Treatment Plant Technician uh, William Donovan, Robert Harrington, Christopher Stroll. This is a, uh, a very happy thing for the uh, town. The uh, DEP recommended to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency that the uh, Medfield Wastewater Treatment Plant should be uh, cited for its uh, excellent operation. So, Bob. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys have had the opportunity uh, to see the plaque. No. Very cool. cool. Wow. In uh, 2013, we were recommended by the, uh, the Mass DEP uh, Bob Kimball of Margo Weber for the uh, for this uh, award, and uh, they're really happy in the uh, the effort that we made that year to change some things at the plant. And the plant needed uh, a lot of upgrades. Um, you take a 1974 plant, and it, it was showing its age, and um, and uh, it just needed basically a, a pretty good facelift. So the my staff with Bill and Chris and Bob Harrington, they, uh, they did a great job as far as uh, following my lead and, and, and giving uh, suggestions and, and working with me to, to get to achieve these goals. In 2014, Margo Weber, uh, again, from the, from the Mass DEP, recommended us for the award. And we continued uh, doing a lot at the plant and we also started continuing uh, working on the pump stations and doing all the uh, renovations of the pump stations. Um, two of them were replaced the pumps and uh, five different pump stations. We just renovated them, and stripped them down, repainted them, and hired a company to come in and redo some of the floors. And so we did a lot of work on those pump stations and uh, they're very important to the infrastructure of this town. Um, also in 2014, we installed these uh, large canopies. And, uh, you can't miss them when you go down there, the big green amphitheaters. We were designed to uh, prevent the sun from uh, hitting our secondary clarifiers, growing the algae that was affecting our process further downstream in the plant. And it's worked out great, and, and uh, it's been a, a nice uh, asset. But all this doesn't happen without a lot of the financial backing from the town, from Ken Feeney, from uh, Mike Sullivan, and uh, those guys have been great. And I don't think they've said no to me yet as far as um, what I've asked to do or to achieve. And Bill jokes around and says, you know, you need to pick up that golden phone and ask if we can get this or try to fix this. And uh, so we, uh, we, we've been aggressive. We've been focus on what we want to do down there. And um, I, I feel that I'm about 75, 80% where, where I want this plant to be. And I think in the next year or two, that uh, it's even going to be in uh, better shape and, and uh, it's going to be running for a long, long time and uh, for the future. And, uh, and uh, Bill and I have uh, put a lot of effort into making sure that we're also bringing along two young guys who haven't been in the industry, um, Bob Harrington and uh, Chris Stroll, and, uh, and it's good. These are guys that are you know, 12, 15 years younger than us, and 
So we're trying to look at the future as far as, you know, for guys that will be there after we leave that can keep going as planned. And a guy like Bob Arrington, who's, uh, he's taken over as lab manager, and he has a background in biology. He's done a great job of uh, restructuring that lab. And we've taken on a lot of the net lab analysis that we use to farm out to, uh, to laboratories to do. And we were paying, you know, the price to have all that analytical mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. And now we're doing about 80% of all our analytical in-house. So, which is, it's just great. And it's great to have a guy like him around that can achieve these, uh, these things. And I put a lot on him and I, I ask a lot of him and he's really come through. So, going forward, um, some of the things that we're looking at is the solar project, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, and that's, it's kind of exciting to know that this is going to be kind of the first big town municipal, municipal photo array, and and, uh, and uh, we got I got I was fortunate to get that grant to get things kick started, which is which is really helpful, and uh, so that's one of the projects that I'm looking forward to for uh, 2015, 2016, <coughs> and we're going to continue. Uh, Bill and I are, are working uh, to continue um, improving some of the uh, pump stations and uh, and we're going to keep on changing out a few of the motors. They may be working okay, but we also know that they're 10, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. So we're mm -hmm. trying to, we're, it's a good thing that we're in preventative maintenance mode versus corrective. Mm -hmm. And that's always where you want to be in this type of industry. But, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. and. Uh, Chris and uh, Bob I couldn't make it, but uh, I wish they were here. To, so, but uh, we're really proud of them and, uh, and Bill. And uh, I think the level of effort and the support I've had in this town has been great so far. So and we're proud of Bob, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought uh, Bob really good stuff. Bob for us and really done a great job, too. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. So the, the award that you uh, brought with you uh, reads, it's from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, New England, Region 1, uh, 2014. It says, Wastewater Treatment Plan Operation and Maintenance Excellent Award, Excellence Award, Medfield, Massachusetts uh, Wastewater Treatment Plant, and it's uh, from January 28, 2015, signed by the regional administrator. So how many of these awards did they give out this year? Uh, we were the only plant in Massachusetts to receive one. Not bad, huh? Yeah, yeah. it's going on. Yeah. Huh? There was yeah. two from Rhode Island and two from New Hampshire received Super. one, but we're the only one to get Excellent. one from the EPA this year. So Congratulations. Very good. Nice work. Should be commended. Uh, actually, we should have you guys run the MBTA. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they need more than us, I think. <laughs> well, just your philosophy of preventative uh, maintenance yeah, and things really like good. that. Proactive and instead of reactive. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I mean, uh, we had a line freeze on us this weekend, and we, and all, all four of us have been working from Sunday on to try to put me in line that we've got to deal with. And, and just knowing that the guys have been there and, uh, and they're seeing this through, and it's not easy in this weather. And no. being outside and dealing with that cold and dealing with water is is, is hard. You're yeah. always constantly freezing, so yeah. it's just not fun. But I mean, they've been there. They've done a great job. So, okay. Th thank you for all you do. Uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, I think a lot of times, uh, I, I'm not sure whether the town appreciates if something breaks or goes wrong, they're going to be all over you. Um, but something like this, it's nice to get recognition. Right. And on your own, you're doing such a good job. So on behalf yeah. of the town, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah appreciate it. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Oh, yeah, photo? Yeah. <laughs> FY16 budget review from Conservation Commission, and we've got Leslie Willits, conservation agent. Good evening, for the record, Leslie Willits, conservation agent for the town. Um, you have the uh, copy of the budget, mm -hmm. operation budget and salary. Uh, it's been level funded since 2012. Okay. Um, the only change has been in the salary. Mm -hmm. uh, 
if you look on uh, the second page, mm -hmm. um, pond maintenance, in 2008, we had appropriated $27,000 from town meeting for pond maintenance. Mm -hmm. The following year, in 2009, it went down to 26000 Then we had two years in that economic low period where we didn't appropriate anything. anything. Yep. Uh, and then, um, then we wound up getting $5,000 a year. As we had predicted, once we started maintaining the ponds, that amount of money would go down each year. Yeah. And so it's been pretty constant at $5,000. Okay, okay, yeah. And that's to maintain five ponds. Okay, yep. Is, is Leslie, is that enough to maintain the, the five ponds, or are we? It is, right now it, it is. is. Yeah. Oh, good. good. Yeah. So that's worked out really well. I, I think the job just on uh, Baker's Pond, a meeting house pond, has been day and night. I mean, if you go back a number of years ago, yeah. the, that was terrible. And really, the past couple of years, it really has looked nice. And since being right in the center of town, it's very vocal. Because right. people think there's like the Loch Ness Monster or something. But they, <laughs> they see all the air bubbling up there. But it's, it's looked good. Uh, uh, just a quick story. There was... Um, uh, a resident who looks at Baker's Pond, Meeting House Pond a lot, right, and didn't realize these aerators were going in. Yeah, yeah. And she stood there waiting and waiting and waiting for the snapper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And no snapper came, and she found out that, you know, the aerators went in, which was pretty good. Um, if you look, uh, you can see that we are requesting again. Um, money, appropriation money into the Conservation Trust Fund. Mm -hmm. um, there's an extra insert there uh, mm -hmm. that shows you the Conservation Trust Fund um, amounts. Okay. It's, a, it's on this Trust Fund 800-003. Mm -hmm. um, and we started uh, as of uh, December of 13, 2013, there was 59000 almost $60,000 in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then our contribution to the Red Gate uh, acquisition uh, reduced that down, and we're now presently at 23000 mm -hmm. uh, The extra 3800 is from gains, losses, interest, et cetera, mm -hmm. as to what the accountants do with it. Above that is the conservation fee fund mm -hmm. uh, for the fees we <coughs> take in for permits, yep. notices of intent, and all of that. Um, as we get towards the end of the fiscal year, the uh, accountant asks for a transfer of money, and that goes into we, we keep $2,000 in um, the fee fund account, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's to take care of any incidentals we may have, including legal ads, et cetera. And anything above that goes into the general fund to yep. offset salary costs. Okay. Let's again, just with the cost of land and things today, that really is a very low amount. If if you twenty three thousand dollars, if you think about it, yeah, it um, gets our foot in the door. <laughs> yeah. So is is that the uh, is it fifty thousand uh, has been the, the request for the past several years? Yes, it has. That's down from what it was years ago, correct? Um. As long as I've been here, which is 22 it's years, we've always asked for 50,000, and we usually get reduced yeah. down to it. For the past few years, it's been 5,000. Last year, um, right. town meeting decided to do 10,000. Um, <clears throat> Leslie, on the pond maintenance, uh, what type of maintenance are you doing? Is that harvesting or chemical treatment or? Yeah, the first the first two years when we had the big acquisitions, yeah. that was mm -hmm. usually for harvesting yeah. and um, you know the use of various chemicals over various periods of time from mm -hmm. spring mm -hmm. into fall. Yep. Um, because you can't you have to do them at an appropriate time for the sure. plants that they're after. Yep. Uh, so the big the big expense came with the harvesting yeah. on Danielson Pond. Oh, yeah. All right, and uh, we took out tons and tons of, of biomass out of that pond. Yeah, yeah. Um, but once it's, once it's accomplished, then it just takes spot chemical okay. um, yep. Yep. treatments. Uh, there, there are no broadcast chemical treatments done on any ponds. They go in after the specific uh, species of plant. Oh, yeah. Do a chemical treatment, and yeah. then they're out of there. 
Good. All right. That's very so. good. What are the it? other four besides uh, Baker's Meeting House? Meeting House Bar? We have Baker's, we have Danielson, Kingsbury, um, Flynn's Pond, and I always forget the fifth one. Um, not Jules. No, not Jules. Jules is private. Um, oh, Mike's thinking. He's got, come on, he can pull it out. Yeah. No, nope. I'm trying to think. It's not, not the, not the it? one up in uh, Noon Hill. Danielson, uh, is it Kingsbury, Flynn, Meeting House. It's not Swim Pond. No, Swim Pond does its own it's it's parking rec. Oh, yeah. park park. Old Pond up in um, New Hill? No, that's Trustees or Reservation. Trustees, okay. Brian Lake? Oh, uh, Cemetery Pond? Cemetery. Cemetery, Pond. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so we get there sooner or later. <laughs> I guess and then the last is, things is I put Vine in Lake. were the yeah. five year action plan for the Conservation Commission mm -hmm. and the five year action plan for the Open Space Excellent. Planning Committee. Excellent. What what did they use to get rid of the purple loose trifle on the Charles River? I know that wasn't us, but it was that they seem to have done a very good job. It used to be very beautiful down there with the fall with the purple mm -hmm. loose trifle, but I understand it is invasive, but it seems they seem to have done a remarkable job of getting rid of it. I don't know unless they're using the, the bug is an insect that they can, um, that they've been trying out to use on purple loose drive. Yeah. Any questions? No, th this is a great job on this five-year okay. action plan. Thank you. I, I, I haven't read through the whole thing, but this looks this good. good. Well, the chair, Mr. Parmesan from the Conservation Commission presented the five-year for the commission, and then Rob Agler, uh, chair of the open space, presented yeah. Uh, that plan to you. Yeah. So, uh, I guess my question, uh, Leslie, is that I, th I think I heard you say that there's been no change in the Conservation Commission budget for three or four years, is it now? Something like that, yeah. But at is least that? since 2012, we've, we've level funded. 2012. So that means that your salary has not changed over that period of time? Other than salary. Oh, other than salary. Okay. The operation budget itself is the level and fund. Level fund. Okay. okay. Yeah, the, the salary and all the budgets gets adjusted by whatever general salary increases voted by the town meeting. Oh, yeah, okay. in prior but you haven't had a, an increase other than the general salary increase? Correct. I believe. No, I, th I no. believe there's been merit increases. Yeah, merit. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, I, I notice, and, and I know uh, Suckman Peterson has talked about this, one of your recommendations, your five-year plan, is to consider passing the Community Preservation Act uh, in order to raise town funds and matching funds. So that's right. going to It's to go back and, you know, that's one of their um, goals is to, you know, take another look at it. Sure. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, there the, there Thank is an article on Tell Me Warrant this year to uh, begin that process. The select have voted to put an article on. The, the one registry one of deeds uh, just came out. Um, I don't know if they sent one to the board selectmen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was just for one year. Yeah, yeah. We saw that we paid forty-five thousand. Midfield people paid forty-five thousand into the into the fund system and didn't get anything back. So yes. Right. This oh, is good to go back and take another look. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank this you is a great information, you. Leslie. Thank you very much for the, the report. Um, next, we have a request from uh, Memo to uh, vote to grant Memo permission to hold its 36th annual Medfield Day and vote to grant a common victualler's license. To so move, Mr. Chairman. Um, I will second that. What's the date for Medfield Day? Third Saturday in September, right? So that'll be whatever that is. September 19. Severe weather date is September 26. Yep. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. Then under action items, uh, Superintendent Feeney requests the selectmen to vote to declare a snow emergency under Mass General Laws Chapter 44, Section 31D. And I was thrilled, Mike, to see that we're only 15000 in the hole on the snow budget. That's the good news. The bad news <laughs> is half the costs aren't in yet. Yeah, exactly. oh, I'm sure we haven't got all the bills yet. It's really bad. Well, and the, and the last one was on a Sunday in the holidays. Sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. Double it's time. It's going to be really bad. 
Um, we do, in, in planning for the budget estimates for this year, I did yeah. include 150,000 snow deficit, so yeah. that will have to help some of the cost. And then the governor declared a snow emergency for the blizzard, yep. and he okay. supplied to the federal government for declaration <coughs> of emergency. I guess mm -hmm. the president has to approve that. It only applies to 48 hours of the blizzard, so you can pick the 48 hours within a certain time range, so yeah. you try to maximize the <laughs> yeah. eligible cost you've yeah. got. Um, we're est estimating if that's approved by the president and uh, FEMA, which is the Federal Emergency yeah. Management, that we'd probably get somewhere around 50 to 60,000, because it's a 75% reimbursement of your okay. actual cost. And, it, it, you can include, like if, if your highway workers are normally working, you can include their times, and, mm -hmm. and they have so much for, depending on the size truck, and yes, yeah. all those things, so yeah. it's quite a job to go through, but Donna Semino has been d done it several times. Times before, so she kind of knows the And routine. I don't know whether, uh, hopefully, there'll be some other declaration for the ongoing emergency, yeah. but I don't know yet. I haven't mm -hmm. heard anything about that. Um, and I think the state's going to have to address some of these, you know, everybody's spending money and have no idea what they're spending. We, we've been putting through $100,000 payrolls. Um, you know, it depends because they're 24 hours a day. They're going yeah. around the clock. They're on the ho weekends and yeah. holidays. And so it's, uh, it's it, 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 this is only the tip of the iceberg. So. Yeah. yeah. The other thing I, I think just to give uh, kudos is the people that are doing the plowing, uh, uh, they're up day and night. They're doing yeoman work. I, I talked to a couple of them that were literally exhausted. That said it's like now a full-time job that they're doing. Yeah. And it's just endless snow after snow. The, the thing I'd just make an appeal, and I know I'm sure the fire chief does, is if, if you know where your fire hydrant is um, near your home, if you can take a few minutes and shovel that out, uh, just today in the town of Ipswich, uh, they had a major fire, and they had to wait till the DPW came in with, with the, uh, the plows to plow out where the hydrants were, and that, mm -hmm. that time makes a difference. So if, if people could, um, most people I think know where the fire hydrant is near their home. If, if, if at all they can uh, shovel that out, it's going to be a big help to themselves, their neighbors, and to the town. Um. Yeah, and, and the other thing, too, <coughs> it hasn't been necessary so far because the weather's been so cold. Mm. But once the weather starts to warm up, which I assume it eventually will, yeah. um, that uh, it would be helpful if people could uh, dig out the catch basins because when this snow starts to melt, we need to yeah, find every place water. we can to put it. Water, so. yeah. um, incidentally, as far as the storm's concerned, uh, and, and I do want to, uh, give credit to the uh, all of our emergency workers or highway guys have done an unbelievable yeah. job. It, it, it's surprising. Ken told me this is the first time in a long time they've received more thank you oh, really? than yeah. complaints. Complaints, yeah. He said they've had a lot of people that have appreciated all the work that these guys have done yeah. and have actually emailed or called oh, to, nice. to uh, yeah. express their appreciation. Yeah. Good. Um, which is um, very nice. Uh, schools have uh, been working with the building inspector to oh, make sure the that roofs. the roofs are yeah. safe, particularly if, if we get uh, any more storms coming, which apparently we are. Um, so there's a lot that goes on. You know, the uh, uh, snow dump, as I emailed you people today, is yeah. now full. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's really a sight to behold if, when you go down the transfer station it's kind of behind where the swap area was yeah. but it expands out forever and it looks like the arctic back there yeah. is unbelievably amount of snow yeah. but it's filled up and yeah. and they're trying to figure out what to do with the additional snow that they're yeah. hauling yeah. so they look at various options and, um, can, can they do the um uh, the parking lot at uh, the swim pond and stuff like that, can they use that? Well, uh, it's a question of whether you need state permission to put it. Yeah, I know you need oh, to put it in the rivers, because it's close but, uh, to snow the... dumps. Uh, I know, for example, a composting site has to be approved by DEP. Oh, yeah. I assume they're not going to, you know, as long as you don't put it in a wetland or something yeah, or yeah. dump directly in the river, that yeah. they would understand what community you're up against. Someplace, yeah. 
I know they were for, giving uh, people permission to actually dump in waterways. Yeah, the ocean. that you have to go through DEP. You have yeah, to and they were given the permission. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they always used to use the uh, swim pond parking lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure there probably was some regulations that I'm sure that went with it. Yeah. That probably because it's so we're, close we're to the pond in, and Ken's stuff. Kent's looking yeah. into a couple of sites. Yeah, Bobby, yeah, we can so get we'll that. Yeah, come up with something. You know that we'll have to start that. renting snow melters at four thousand dollars an hour, like the. Uh, like the, the, like the city of yes. Boston does. Well, why, why are those so expensive to run? Because <laughs> they, they can, that's why. <laughs> well, uh, and the other thing about that is that when that snow melts, it yeah. turns into water, water. the ground yeah. is frozen, so yeah. it can't go into the ground to get filtered, so it goes in the storm drains and goes into the rivers. Yeah, so, yeah. so it just makes um, a but, liquid. You know, yeah. you, you, do, you do what you got to do. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I move then that we um, declare a snow emergency under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 31D for the town of Midfield. I will uh, second that. All in favor? Aye. Yep. And the Warren Committee will act on that next week. They're, right. they're meeting. Yeah. Uh, Mike, uh, could you also update people about the salt? Because I know there was a lot of interest in the fact that the town ran out of salt and how that was resolved. Yeah. Um, and we, uh, we did talk to Representative Garlick and uh, with her usual... Uh, speed. She got on the phone and called Chicago and got a hold of the more salt people. Yeah. And uh, suddenly there was salt. Um, we did have to send, I believe, three or four trucks in one day into Charlestown yeah. to get salt from Eastern Minerals. And yeah. under our contract, uh, we're entitled to bill them for the difference in price. Oh, sure. Yeah. So we will do that. But then all of a sudden, we started getting deliveries. And Ken told me, as of this morning, they were, had got six loads of salt delivered. So. We're in much better shape in that regard. Yeah. We're part of a, a regional salt bid, so we were not the only town uh, who was not receiving those yeah, deliveries. Yeah, we were getting a number of calls from other yeah. towns asking us. We're, the, we're, we're the lead there. town on that on mm -hmm. that regional bid, so. And the, and the issue, as I understand it, was that we had requests in for the salt deliveries, but they just weren't delivered. They just weren't coming, right. yeah. Well, they just was something about tired, it was being... Uh, commandeered by the state of Rhode Island Department of Transportation because the Morton Salt delivery site is in Rhode Island. Oh, really? That's what oh. my understanding is. There was some question whether the Mass DOT was commandeering something, some, but I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> they might have <laughs> gone down and scooped some trucks, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, you know, and, and I can understand it, you know, when you get on the highways and the day after the storm and people are still driving 70 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. can understand why they need to have those roads clear. Oh, I know. They do. Particularly yeah. on the uh, mm. uh, exits and entrances. Oh, yeah. It's particularly yeah. dangerous. So. Ah. Interesting. I think, uh, Interesting. We've been very lucky so far, except the people who aren't so lucky, and there's a yeah. lot of those out there. I think yeah. the aftermath of this storm is going to be even worse than what we're going through now. Yeah. Uh, we're all just hoping we don't get a quick thaw. I know, because that would be minute, really bad. Because it's... Uh, mm -hmm. A rain yeah, would be rain. really bad. It would just weigh everything down. Soak into the snow would be you know, it'd be awful. And then freeze. Yeah. Yeah. Next item is a vote to sign agreement with Gale Engineers and Planners for professional services regarding the public safety building. Yeah, that's for a review with the bid specs, I believe, and the, the RFP. So an outside peer review. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, Mark reviewed that contract and negotiated some changes with them. And is uh, okay with it. So, and the building committee has recommended that we uh, go Enter ahead into with the it. Yeah. Any further questions about that? Then, otherwise, can we have a motion? I move that we uh, sign the agreement with Gale Engineering Engineers and Planners for professional service regarding the public safety building. I will uh, second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Yep. Aye. Uh, town Council, Mark Sorrell requests the oh, selectmen vote to timing. sign Redgate Farm Settlement Agreement. And we had a little discussion at the beginning of the meeting before you got here about whether or not you wanted to do this in open session or in uh, executive session. So we'll be guided by you, I guess. Preference would be to do it in open session. Ultimately, it would have to be voted and signed in open session anyway if there were any uh, questions about it or the background uh, or opposition. Then, and you wanted an executive session, we simply left the option open. Uh, as you recall, however, uh, we have had previous executive sessions, and the last one we uh, gave certain authority to uh, uh, myself and Barbara St. Andre outside council to uh, um, attempt to resolve the matter. Uh, ultimately, the, uh, the plaintiff's uh, developer 
uh, has accepted the settlement within the parameters uh, that we had to offer, and uh, there have been really protracted negotiations on the terms of a settlement agreement and an agreement for judgment which went with the court. Um, ultimately, the town of Medfield would pay $30,000 to the developer. Uh, this is basically to avoid additional litigation expenses. Um, the other terms are that uh, um, a deposit which was being held by the uh, uh, Kenny's yeah. trustees of Redgate Farm would be returned to the developer and also there was a provision in the original purchase and sales agreement that the uh, developer would be reimbursed up to $100,000 for their expenses by trustees of Redgate if the town exercised its right of first refusal, and so they've now agreed to do that. Uh, all obligations, financial, uh, are dependent upon the filing of the agreement for judgment with the land court. Uh, we're not exactly sure it's one of two ways. Um, in one case, if we, the attorney simply signed it, filed with the court, and the court accepts it for filing, that's fine. In some cases, uh, each judge has his or her own <clears throat> approach, and um, if the judge wanted to get involved in it, then unless and until uh, it was in a form that he he accepts and it gets filed, again, there'd be no obligation uh, for the town to pay anything. So uh, the first step is for all parties to sign the settlement agreement. The uh, <coughs> developer, uh, AGL Ventures, uh, both the principals have signed it, their attorney has signed it, and so I'm here tonight uh, uh, for the Board of Selectmen to sign it. Can I just ask this clarification, if, if the, the board didn't go along with that 30000 and we continued to fight into court, is there a ballpark of what that would have cost the town um, if this had strung out until the uh, land court made a decision? At least that amount, probably closer to 50. And again, uh, because of the legal issues involved here, there's no guarantee that uh, if the judge, which, whichever way the judge found that there wouldn't be further proceedings uh, by way of an appeal to either the appeals court or the Mass Supreme Judicial Court. Um, and um, in a worst case scenario, if the court had. Uh, taken the transaction apart and made the town go through it again, we would incur expense mm -hmm. in doing that as well. So sure. uh, as remote as that possibility was, uh, there's no absolutes. Yep. <clears throat> and then my second question was, um, what's the timeline? Uh, is there a ballpark for the land court to do the filing? Are we talking days, week, months, years? I'm sure that, that we're going to have it filed in the land court in a matter of days. And as I said, either the registrar's office will accept it, uh, review, uh, probably review it with, uh, typically in this case, they would, they would run it by the uh, particular judge's session clerk to determine whether or not it can simply be filed uh, or the judge is going to take a more interactive approach. Mm -hmm. So, if it's a matter of just filing, we're talking, and the court accepting it, it's days. Um, if not, then um, there's no real way to tell. It could be longer than you know days. It could be weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, if the judge, judge decides that he he wants to review it and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the the conventional wisdom would say. If the parties are happy, I'm happy. The court's not being asked to affirmatively do anything, right. declare anything, what have you. So, fine. Everybody be on your way. Okay. Good. So, I guess I would uh, just summarize for the residents uh, the fact that <coughs> we weren't at all executive sessions that led into the approval of this settlement. Um, the the underlying reason that the town has entered into the settlement is because the costs of the litigation were represented to be higher than the settlement amount. 
if we went to trial. Uh, we thought that we were going to have a good outcome at trial, but it didn't make sense to go forward if it was going to cost us more to to have the trial. And the, and trials and litigation are never certain, so you never know how it's going to come out for sure. Um, but we saw this as a cost saving. Of, uh, resolution for the uh, matter on behalf of the town. So that's why we're going forward with it. I, I think the other thing to point out is <clears> that the town purchased the property for a million four with this settlement. It will be a million four hundred thirty thousand. Right, so exactly. relative to the total purchase price, it's, it's a relatively small amount. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, we, we have other costs for yes, legal defense beyond that already that we've incurred. Right, and that's one reason to settle because those costs would be ongoing without right. a settlement. Yep. So. Exactly, to stop and the I, It's also important to note that uh, uh, um, while, while we had never taken a hard position in the first place, uh, the, the plaintiff developer's principles uh, became much more uh, uh, willing to discuss an alternate resolution within the last few months. Yeah. So once um, the judge uh, either reviews or, or goes along with this, then it's officially in the hands of the town of Midfield? Yeah, we need, a, we need to have this entered as a judgment of the court in order to be able to pay it uh, from, from uh, financially. Uh, so in order to have that authorization, it must be entered as a, a judgment of the court. And the, the town actually has closed on the property months ago, right. so we already own the property. Oh, yeah. um, this is just getting... But there is a Liz, the there is, a, there is a, what's called a Liz Pendens or a notice of suit that you will recall right. was filed at the time, even though the judge denied a preliminary injunction to uh, uh, hold up the transaction. He did allow the uh, developer to file a notice of suit called a Liz Pendens, so it's also addressed in here that that will be dissolved. The lease pendants is notice to the rest of the world that there's a, a, a legal issue about the title to the property. So it would, it would prevent us from selling it, basically. Um, and, uh, and also, uh, a lot of the monies that uh, um, have been held back on the proceeds mm -hmm. uh, to protect the town. So that frees up the money to go to the, the uh, Kenny uh, Redgate Trust as well. So. so that's good, very, very good. Because of the, and I'll just try to summarize that for the people uh, uh, who weren't, in the, again, in the executive session, part of the, the, the agreement that was worked out was that since there was litigation over the transaction, that the town did not pay the full purchase price to the Kennys at the time of the closing. Um, a lot of the money was held back pending the outcome of the litigation. Right. Again, to protect the town's interest. Mr. Chairman, then I move that we uh, sign the Redgate Farm Settlement Agreement. Uh, I will second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Yep. Aye. Uh, next word. Just, just to thank uh, legal counsel on yeah. both sides uh, uh, for all the work. I know you guys have put a lot of time into that, so thank you. We always enjoyed our meetings with, with you and, uh, and your cohort. <laughs> it's always fun. Um, it, 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 it's been challenging, um, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a good resolution. So, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, next, we uh, are asked to vote to close the March 23, 2015 Special Town Meeting Warrant. And this is the uh, uh, Special Town Meeting that will have two war warrant articles. One is to uh, approve the uh, s photovoltaic array at the wastewater treatment plant and the second and the borrowing for that and the other one is to uh, approve the construction and the borrowing for the public safety building. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, close the March 23rd, 2015 special town meeting warrant. I will uh, second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, yep. Um, the, uh, I don't know if you want to take positions on those articles at this state or, or uh, I know they've been pretty well vetted by the board and uh, there is a brochure being mailed out and the committee has already has indications that the Warren Committee voted unanimously to support both articles and the uh, school committee voted unanimously to support the uh, public safety building. I don't think they were asked on the other one that they wouldn't. But, so I don't know if you people want to 
vote sure. uh, yeah, your positions on those. Yeah. Uh, I would I would move that we uh, vote to uh, support both warrant articles. I will second that. Um, all in favor? I guess. <laughs> all in favor. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Aye. <laughs> um, next, we're uh, uh, asked to vote to sign the uh, special town meeting uh, warrant for the uh, March 23, 2015 special town meeting. Uh, I move we sign the March 23rd, 2015 special town meeting warrant. I will second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next under uh, licenses and permits, the Medfield Music Association requests permission to post signs advertising two events, the Moxie Strings on Thursday, March 19, and the annual Jazz Night on Feb uh, Friday, uh, May 1. So moved. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Yep. Beginning years, parent board requests a one-day wine and malt beverage permit for event on Saturday, March, April, I'm sorry, April 11, 2015 at the Dwight Derby House. So moved. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Yep. This program was made possible through the generous support of your Medfield friends and neighbors, folks just like you. And thanks for watching.